it's interesting here. It's interesting here to read that yes, uh, Mark called this the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Because you got to realize of the four gospels, Mark was written first. Mm -hmm. uh, one that that giveaways that that's true is this is the shortest of the four gospels. Right. And uh, so as Mark began to write. No one, Matthew hadn't been written yet. Luke hadn't been, John hadn't been written. He was the first one to actually sit down and start writing the gospel of the Lord Jesus. What that good news would be as far as Jesus coming and dying for our sins, rising again from the third day, like Paul explained in verse 15 what the gospel was. So it's very interesting and uh, significant to notice the beginning of this book because it was the oldest. But yet you probably are wondering, well, why is Matthew first, and then Mark, and Luke, and then John? Because, again, we see the four faces of the gospel story. Amen? Right. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved for a workman, and needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. So we recognize, according to 2 Timothy, that there are proper divisions in the Bible. And you've got to study your Bible to know how to rightly divide your Bible. Right. Matthew doesn't write like Mark. Mark doesn't write like Luke. And Luke definitely don't tell you everything that John tells you. Right. They're distinct men that are all telling you about the one same Jesus. But it's like four men standing at four different street corners and then in the middle of of the intersection, boom, something happens. And so they're each writing from their own perspective. And so they have a central theme. They have a central verse. And they're trying to show you a certain aspect of Jesus. Because Jesus was more than just a man. Jesus yes. was 100% God. He's right, brother. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, the reason Matthew comes first, Mark comes second, Luke comes third, and John comes last, which goes to Revelation chapter 4. Mm -hmm. In verse 7, the Bible says, and The first beast was like a lion, the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that the Bible tells us that yes, there's these cherubs around the throne, cherubim. Right. And here John describes them as beasts, and like the Bible explained to us back in Exodus, or I mean in Ezekiel chapter 1 and Ezekiel chapter 10, we talked about the face of a cherub, and how that normally a cherub has an ox face. Right. But how these cherubs are very unique creatures, because here it's a one creature with many wings. And they seem to actually even bear the throne of God and carry it through the air on occasion as it did in Ezekiel, as it did in Ezekiel mm -hmm. wheel and wheel and all that. And yet these things don't have to turn their head to look because they have a face that's looking one of four directions at all times. That's right. And here we actually see them described for us. Now the Bible teaches us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for what? Yeah. Number one, for doctrine. Mm -hmm. Every verse has mm -hmm. a lion application. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given for doctrine, for reproof. Mm -hmm. Every verse has a ox representation. Scriptures give a fresh God is profitable to doctor for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Every verse of scripture has four applications. You have to understand that, know that. Yeah. When you meet other people and they try to take one application of the Bible, cram it down your throat. I always back off and laugh at them, say, Oh no, 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 no. I know what the Bible says. That's mm -hmm. right. There are four applications of all God's inspired. It's sad, I, I'm sad to say, but even Dr. Ruckman only teaches three applications of Scripture. That's right. Since what he was taught when he went to university. But thank God I got a Bible I can read with my own eyes. That's right. But it says in 2 Timothy 3.16. That's right. Amen. It clearly says there's four. That's right. Is it for doctrine, for truth, for correction, for instruction, righteousness? And it sure is there's four faces <laughs> for those beasts around the throne, my friend. You can be sure that you've got a Bible that tells you about the one Jesus, but it's even written four Gospels. Mm -hmm. 
Matthew is showing you that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the prophesied right. King of the Jews. That's right. That's right. Amen. So that's what Matthew zooms in on. And he talks a lot about the things that the Jews had questions about. But Mark, oh, no, no, no. Mark isn't even going to waste time with giving us the genealogy of Christ to show us that he can trace himself back to the King David. Unlike Matthew, because Mark has no agenda like that. Mm -hmm. But Mark wants to show us that Jesus was truly God's suffering servant. Amen. And especially in that day, when so much of the world ran on slaves, That's right. it's so interesting to me that Mark is going to help us see that Jesus was a man that would appeal to most of the slave people of the world. Hey. Because he's a common savior. I mean, he was born in shepherds' came. He wasn't born in the city, and kings were rallied to his side. It was the common people. It was the poorest of people. It was the shepherds. It's one thing to have a job in America, but you know you're really down low on the pay scale if your only job is a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Or an animal tender. <laughs> but amen. Right. Our Jesus came for even the poorest. Amen, that's right. Back that's right. That's right. Have a prominent position with Jesus. That's right. That's right. So that's Mark's agenda. And so Mark is going to show us Jesus as the true servant. And as an ox of all the animals and creatures out there, man over the centuries have used an ox as a burden bearer to pull that plow, pull great wagon loads of stuff certainly our Jesus.